OK, so here's a great tool to find out some details about the college that you may be considering, or maybe your child's headed there this fall, or maybe you're just getting started on the college search. This is a wonderful website that has a lot of details in it that you just can't get all aggregated anywhere else. It's called College Navigator. It's from the National Center for Education Statistics. Uh, here's the address on the screen. Once you get there, you'll see some places to enter some information. You can either type the name of the particular school you're looking at here, or you can look by state, zip code. Um, and if you want to look at you know, only public schools or only four-year schools, only two-year schools, then go ahead and check those boxes. I'm going to look at Alabama all the schools in Alabama and once you click that you see you have a whole bunch of colleges come up so just for simplicity's sake let's click on Auburn University popular um, here's a whole bunch of information again on Auburn we've got you know we can tell there are 24,864 students you have got an 18 to 1 fa student faculty ratio here are the kinds of degrees that they offer and then under these tabs is where there is just lots and lots of information that you'll want to know. So here is the first screen that you're going to see under general information. You're going to have information about links to uh, where you can apply. Uh, this net price calculator here is a great tool. Not all schools have it, but it's a tool where you can enter, you know, certain financial information and it can tell you uh, what you might be expecting to pay for college. But when you start scrolling down, you get to see more information. You see how many faculty members they are, how if they have some part-time folks, um, and who's in instructional services and who is doing research. When you click on tuition and fees, this is where you get your first real look at what this might tell you, uh, what you what you might pay. So you've got tuition and fees in state and out of state, uh, and what you might pay for books and supplies. As you can see in Alabama, you know it continues to go up. Um, how much room and board you can expect to pay if you're going to live on off campus, how much might you expect to pay, and then your total expenses. So you've got this multi-year tuition calculator. That's helpful if you want to go ahead and figure it all out. Here are the costs for in-state tuition, out-of-state tuition, um, and if you've got, you know, they have tuition payment plans. Click on financial aid, and this tells you um, who is receiving financial aid. How many students are there? So out of the 28,000 students, well these are, um, sorry, these are freshmen. Out of the freshman class, 2,800 of them had some sort of financial aid. And this breaks it down a little further. It tells you what kind of financial aid, uh, who's taking student loans, how much that is, and then in all of the undergraduates, there are 10,712 students that are receiving some type of aid. The net price is where you're going to see what you can expect to pay after you have received all um, grants and scholarships. So you can see at Auburn University the price has gone up 14000 15000 17000 But this table gives you a better idea of, well, if you make between zero and $30,000, you can expect to pay $13,000. You know, again, these are 2012-2013 figures and we're now getting into the 2015-16 school year, so of course there's going to be a bit of a shift. Now, this is that inst uh, institutional net price calculator that not all universities, not all institutions have it, but it can tell you if you can enter your ACT score and um, if you already filled out your federal application for student aid, then you would be able to enter your expected family contribution and it can tell you what you might expect to pay. All right, going on to enrollment. So this is for fall 2013. You've got your total enrollment. You've got how many of them are graduates, how many are undergraduates. You've got this breakdown of race and ethnicity, uh, what their ages are, and how many of them are from in-state, out-of-state, or foreign countries. Same thing for graduate students. 61% of them are full-time. Um, here, here are uh, the breakdowns for if you're doing distance education. You know, a lot of Schools now offer online courses, and this is an indication of how many of these students are taking online or distance courses. When you go to admissions, this is where you get to see another kind of a breakdown, right? You've got 83% of those who applied admitted, and of those admitted, 29% uh, of those enrolled. So you've 
you know, you can say, okay, I've got to have a GPA. Um, I really need to have uh, an ACT or an SAT score. Some schools are now saying that's optional. So this is a way for you to figure out, do I have to take the ACT or the SAT? Of course, all Alabama public school students now take the ACT in the 11th grade. But okay, so now we get into submitting scores. Students who submitted the SAT, how many of them submitted them? As you can see, Auburn has a lot of students that submit the ACT. Then you get into the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile. And if you're wondering what that means, here's a little um, cheat sheet down here. At the 25th percentile for the ACT composite, which is all the scores added together, Auburn, the, the students score at a 24. At the 75th percentile level, that score is a 30. So you know that's the, you know, average, uh, you know, ACT score. So retention and graduation rates. This is very important because retention rates, you know, how many kids who enroll come back the next year, right? And then graduation rate, how many kids actually graduate? And I believe this is a six-year um, a graduation rate. Um, yeah, it's a six-year graduation rate. So you can see that 89% of the students who are full-time students came back the next year began in fall 2012 and returned in 2013. And the graduation rate, how many of those students started in fall 2007 and had graduated by fall 2013? 68% of those students had. 22% of the students transferred somewhere else. Um, and they call that six years 150% of normal time. So so now we're looking at the bachelor's degree graduation rates. This is of those students who started in fall 2005, see the color coding, how many of them achieved their four-year degree in four years as planned? 36% of them did. How many of them achieved it in six years? As you can see, that was the rate we just said, 68%. And then if you look at the eight-year rate, we only have that eight-year rate for fall 2005 at 69%. Same thing here, six-year graduation rate by gender. 63% um, of males completed their degree within six years, and 72% of females did. And this is the graduation rate by race or ethnicity. As you can see, 55% of the Asian students completed their uh, degrees within six years. 71% of white students did. Um, and then Hispanic students, 57%. Black or African American, 51%. These are the programs and majors that they offer. So you'll want to page through these and see, you know, does your, does this school, it, it offers a bachelor's degree, it offers a master's degree, or it maybe offers a doctorate in something that your child or you are interested in pursuing. Varsity athletic teams tells you what division they're in, how many students, uh, how many men, how many women participate in all of these various sports. And then their accreditation. How are they accredited in each of their programs? How are each of their programs accredited? Then we look at campus security. How many arrests on campus? Uh, it only goes through 2013. Um, you know, you might want to see, do they have, do they seem to have a problem in one particular area or another? Cohort default rates. So these are um, those who default on their student loans. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of information on this page, this College Navigator. It gives you a bit of an inside look at what that college is like. So I hope it's useful to you. Thank you.